Chicago. Let's bring in, let's talk a little football, all right? And let's can talk. Can I ask him about the Celtics first? <laughs> no, at the end you can. We're bringing him on because Michael Hurley is a radio sports talk host for The Hub in Boston, and he wrote a very interesting article about um, Tom Brady and Deflategate. Um, and, and the headline on the article is, all NFL players should be frightened and outraged by the Tom Brady transcripts. And, and Michael, tell me if I'm uh, characterizing the article correctly. Uh, basically, if you fight Goodell in the NFL, you're going to lose. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's, that's the gist of it. And it's, it's maybe not the best example of it because this is Tom Brady we're talking about, and he has you know the highest the highest power lawyers money can buy, and he has the union fighting for him. So uh, he'll probably win in the end uh, the, in court. But, you know, the, the, the 50th member of the Browns roster isn't going to have that kind of backing. You know, he's just going to get suspended and have to deal with it. And I think uh, there's a lot that goes into it that, that's really unfair. And I think, you know, NFL players might not be too keenly aware of that right now. They're just sort of laughing at the golden boy uh, for, for getting in hot water here. But I think if they find themselves in this position, they're going to find themselves uh, – in a lot of trouble with no way out. Michael, this is Woody, and I, and I read the transcript, and, and, I, and I read your piece, and I, we're sitting here in Denver, Colorado, and the people in Denver, Colorado hope that Tom Brady never plays again. Uh, yes. I mean, that's <laughs> not me. Well, no, I'm I saying, see no. Oh, I'm talking, about, I'm see talking about the fans. I got the, you. The fans. I think... <laughs> The NFL has backed itself in the corner, and what they'd really like to do is make this go away and say, okay, <coughs> we're going to find you. But it's almost like it's now Goodell trying to protect himself from being run out of New York City, being run out of the NFL, being maybe run out of the country. Is that a fair assessment at all? Um, well, overall, I've been saying since the Ray Rice situation that Goodell's days are numbered. And that doesn't mean, you know, he's got days, weeks, or just months left. But I think there will come a point where the, the owners look around and they'll, they'll, they'll find themselves in a situation where they need a commissioner with credibility, one that people actually believe when he speaks. And Goodell doesn't have that anymore. With each, you know, lawsuit, with each, with each situation he finds himself in, it gets exposed more and more that, you know, he's not afraid to lie. He's not afraid to deceive. And, and in this ruling, uh, and when he upheld uh, Brady's decision, he said, when, when we asked Tom about his increased uh, communications with the assistant uh, equipment director, he said he just talked about the footballs and in the, in the, preparing them for the Super Bowl, uh, as if to intimate that, you know, Tom was hiding something that he denied ever talking about the rumors and the reports and in the allegations, where the, the transcript laid it out pretty clearly. He talked about it a lot. He said, me and Dostrensky and I, we, we talked about that, sure. And so that was something, and that's the same exact thing he did with Ray Rice. It's the same exact thing where a behind-closed-doors statement was, was twisted and mischaracterized when Goodell went public to try to make the bad guy look worse and try to make himself look better. And he got exposed for that with the release of these transcripts. He's Michael Hurley. He writes for CBS Boston. He also hosts a radio show on The Hub in that very same city. Which I'm actually just a web producer. I'm a, I'm a yeah. part-time, uh, you know, Gas down, down in the stage. Studio. Michael, Michael, come on, we're building you up. Don't, don't kill it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't kill your flow, man. Uh, I'm a TV host too. There you go. Good, right. Jesse. Now you're talking. You're good enough. Yeah. Those Dennis and the Callahan and whatever. Those people stunk. But anyway, you're much better than them. Here, here's the deal. Thank for you. months, for years and years and years, I've talked to Broncos players, and I've said. Who does Goodell think he is? And this is long before Deflate Gate. He's, uh, you know, judge, jury, and executioner. And do you think it can g get to a point in the league where there's critical mass where players say, we don't trust this guy, and if they did, would that matter? I think it's possible, and this might be the first time in the history of Earth that I'll use the NHL as a good example uh, <laughs> compared to other sports leagues. But the way they do discipline works. It's fair. They have sort of a separate division. They have someone in charge. They explain things very clearly. They do have an appeal system, but it's very rarely, you know, uh, is ever comes to anything like this scale. They don't get taken to court, and it works pretty well. So maybe... This is the case, uh, provided the NFLPA wins in court, maybe this is the case that, that gets something like that to start yeah. to be established. Because if you read that transcript and just listen to what, or read what Goodell said at that meeting, he's not 
capable of, of performing in that role. He, he says himself he's not an attorney. His, the questions he asks are ridiculous. He asks the same question five times in a row just to sort of let everyone else in the room know he's still there. So he, it's not, it shouldn't be his job, and he's doing a bad job at it. So I think maybe this can be the case where they can take some of that power out, and I think that's why the NFLPA wanted it to go to court, and they wanted these transcripts public. Michael, I want to follow up on that because I've maintained for 25 years that w what happened is that baseball, after the Black Sox scandal, and I know you're not old enough, I'm barely old enough to remember that, but that after the Black Sox scandal, they wanted a powerful commissioner. We want somebody to clean up this sport. Judge Kenneshaw Mountain Landis. That, that example has been followed to this day. When you are a $8 billion corporation, you need a CEO and then people under the CEO. His job should be the owner's commissioner of getting them money, TV, money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. and Polishing then, the uh, shield, you know. And yeah. then under that is, you're absolutely right, Michael, and you're on to it, is that over here you have a <laughs> vice president who's in charge of discipline. Over here you have a vice president who's in charge of rules or competition. You have over here, you have a series of five vice presidents, vice president of public relations, as Joe Brown has been forever. I don't understand why they still are following the same in baseball and in football and construct. even in basketball. Yeah. That we're in the we're in a new century, a new millennium, and and Michael, I just that, that's not a question. It's just sort of a statement. You're absolutely right that he's not equipped to handle what he's doing. And would you agree that the solution is they got to tear up the system and almost start all over again? I mean, you're talking about well, NHL. I would also add that if you're going to have a commissioner who's so dead set on being this litigious, he should have a background in law. True. He shouldn't have a background yeah. in economics because the guy, un, uh, you know, the league is healthier than ever, making more money than ever. And mm -hmm. frankly, when, when the Ray Rice situation was going on and the country targeted Goodell and wanted him to lose his job, the owners loved that because the heat was off of them. The heat was on the commissioner. He was just, you know, doing their work and taking all the heat for it uh, publicly. Uh, so, so there's a lot of things that Goodell does right by the owners, but it, yeah, I just think if you want, if, if the commissioner is so gung ho about going to court and fighting to the bitter end, he should at least, you know, have you know a few law books in his library, and Goodell doesn't. Michael, appreciate your time. Um, instead of me singing it, why don't you tell everybody what you do for a living? Because evidently, I got it all wrong. And your Twitter. I, uh, I'm a I'm a, I'm a producer for the website CBSBostonSports.com, which, which is for the 98.5 of Sports Hub. We, we, we like a lot of long titles. Here. Okay. Oh, Can I ask you about the Celtics before we go? Yeah, sure. Uh, no. Well, Walt Frazier says that the Knicks are not going to make the playoffs because Philadelphia's better, which I don't believe. And then Charlotte's Boston's better. better. Charlotte's better. I don't know that the Celtics are much better. Are they much better than they were? <laughs> are they much better than they were last year? I, I know they can't be much worse, but are they going to be a playoff team this year? I think you're looking at, and I think it hurt the Celtics to make the playoffs this year because they were just they fight too hard and they're too well coached to sort of fall into the lottery. I think you'll probably be looking at another eight seed, seven seed for the Celtics. I, I, I'm with you. I can't imagine them jumping into the the top, you know, four of the conference. And there are people here who are a little bit optimistic, but I, they just, you know, the, the, you need the talent to, to get up there, and they're still lacking in that department. Great coach, uh, fun to watch. Crappy squad, but uh, not exactly a uh, tender. Great. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, we Michael. Hope Thank you'll you. join us again. Michael we'll, Hurley. Thank you. I really appreciate we'll it. We'll get from you Boston. titles right. <laughs> 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 All I've guessed brought to you by Papa John's, the official sponsor of the Colorado Rockies. The day after every Rockies win, you can get 50% off your online order. 50% off your pizza at papajohns.com. Use the promo code ROXWIN, R-O-X-W-I-N.